All right, so this is the Microsoft Swift Key keyboard app. And in this video, I'll be talking about some of the features that I like from this app because I've been using Gboard for a very long time now and I just wanted to see uh, the differences between this one and Gboard and if it is worth switching from this or from Gboard to this one. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about some of the features that I like about the Swift key and then features that I don't like. All right, so the first thing that I like is that you can sync your Swift key across multiple devices. So if you have like stuff in your clipboard, you don't have to enter them in all your devices. If you just enter it on one device, then all the rest of the devices will have it as long as you are signed into your Microsoft account. So just sign in and then start using it. All right, so another thing that I like with the Swift key is that um, let's say you're chatting with someone and you wanted to do a quick search, like a quick Google search. Well, you don't have to leave the conversation in order to do the search. You can easily just enter the Swift keyboard and then you tap here and tap search. Then you can search for anything you want. So what I searched for, for testing this was when was the Swift key launched? If you're having maybe a discussion with someone or an argument, then you can quickly do this to, you know, find out if what you're saying is true or not. And uh, yeah, this is it. So you can see it was released on the 14th of July, 2010. So you can quickly tell the person that. And you can just tap here. Maybe this is what you just want the person to see. You can tap this crop button here and just select this. Tap send. And it's going to take that screenshot and also take the link to the screenshot as well. You can just tap send and this is it. The person is going to see the screenshot as well as the link in case they are feeling like maybe it's fake. So they can just click on the link and they'll see the exact stuff. So yeah, this is something I also like about the Swift key. With Swift key, you can have shortcuts for important stuff on your clipboard. So if I open the app now, you can see the clipboard over here. It has my number. This is my public number that I give out to anyone online. And uh, if someone asks for my number, I don't have to always type it. So I can just tap here and it's going to apply the number. The Gboard also has this and I'm glad it's here. But here's the thing, there's something different. This number has a shortcut. You can see over here there's NOM. Since NOM is not really a word, whenever I type in NOM, it's just going to get the number. It doesn't matter if it's capital letter or not. You can see that uh, the number has been displayed. So I can just tap here and it's going to replace that word with my number so that I don't always have to type my number. All right, so the next feature that I want to talk about may not be liked by everyone, but there's an option that you can activate so that whenever you tap this button here, you can either have the numbers this way, like on the right or on the left. And it's a better way for you to type numbers because the numbers across, sometimes it's hard to reach these numbers over here. When you are typing so you may have to use both of your fingers to do that but if you just want to use one hand to type out numbers or you can see all the numbers over here very cool feature that i like if you tap here there are some modes that you can choose from and um, here they are there's the full mode which is what i'm currently using there's a one hand mode so if you want to type on the right well all the keys will be shifted to the right there's a thumb mode you can see there's a split over here in the keyboard so you can just focus your left thumb on this side and your right thumb on this side which is something that i also like and then there's a flute feature i don't really know when i'll be using this because i've never had to use this but you can have the keyboard floating so that uh, it's always going to be accessible i guess and if you're done with it you can just drag this down and it's going to auto switch to flow so yeah, this is a really cool feature that I like. And you can also resize the keyboard if you want. So if you want it very small down here, you can see it, it is very small. If you want it larger, then you can see it has filled the whole, like half of the screen is the keyboard now, which is not ideal. So you can just tap reset if you want to take it back to the normal size. But for me, I like it a bit smaller than normal. So I'll tap OK. And uh, yeah, but maybe this is too small. I'll fix that later on. I have some text written here. I will still meet him today. I have not sent the text yet, but you may type something out or you may want to say it in another way. Well, there's a feature called the editor feature. Just tap this pencil icon and it's going to get the text for you. 
and it will check if there are grammar errors. Like right now, it is checking for grammar errors and it says we didn't find any suggestions at this time. Your text looks pretty good. So that means that I didn't make any grammar errors. I didn't, I didn't add unnecessary punctuation marks and all that stuff. But if you tap here, you can change the tone of the message. So just let it load. Okay, so if you want it to be professional, it's going to give you this suggestion. Is our meeting still scheduled for today? If you don't want to be professional, you can slide this way or you can tap down here as well. If you want it to be casual, it says, hey, are we still on for our meeting today? Polite, may I confirm if our meeting is still happening today? There's also a funny one and I think there are two others. So you can just go through them and see which one you like. Okay, there's also this feature called Compose, which you have to be signed into in order to use. Remember when I talked about synchronization, as long as you're, you have signed into your Microsoft account, then you're going to be able to access this feature. And uh, you can use this to create, like, I think the most important thing to do with this feature is create emails. But there's also an option for blog posts, ideas, and paragraphs. I've only, I've only tried the email option, so so I'm going to be showing you today. So I'm still going to be working with this one. Are we still meeting today? So I can convert this to an email. If I want it to be professional, I can leave it as a professional email. So I'll tap email here. If I want the email to be long or short or medium, I can choose that from here. So for this video, I'm just going to stick to medium. Well, let's just make it long and see what happens. So I'll tap generate draft and I'll wait for the app to give me an email talking about if I'm still having a meeting with someone. So yeah, you can see it has started typing out the email. Okay, it's not that long, but it is good enough. So if you read the email and you like it, well, you can just copy it. If you want to make any adjustments, you can just tap and then you do the adjustments you want. After that, just copy and then you can close here and paste it wherever you want. So instead of saying, are we meeting? Are we still meeting today? I can just paste the email. You have to do all the editing because you have to enter your name, your position, your company, all that stuff. If all that stuff is not necessary, you can delete them. And then you tap send. So there are so many other features that you may like that I can't get into because there are so many. So there are very there are a lot of things that you can choose from. For me, I use the last one because whenever you switch from light mode or to dark mode from your phone, the keyboard is going to auto adjust to how you want it to be. Now, there are only two things that I don't like personally with the Swift Key app. But uh, maybe you may not care about those things, but uh, who knows? Let me just show you guys what I'm talking about. So, let's say you're typing something like, how are you? Alright, so I just typed how and it is suggesting completing the sentence with um, are you. So, yeah, this is what I want to say. Now, the next thing that should come should be a question mark. And if I do that, you see that there's a space between the are you and the question mark, which is not supposed to be so. With Gboard, you don't go through stuff like this. Gboard will remove the space. In fact, let me show you what I mean. So I just switched to Gboard, and if I type the same thing, how are you, and then I enter a question mark, you see that there is no space between the you and the question mark, because that is how it's supposed to be. All right, so the next thing that I do not like about the Swift key is that um, with Gboard, because I've been using Gboard for a while now, if I take a screenshot, after taking the screenshot, you can see that Gboard has now applied it to my clipboard. So let's say I wanted to send the screenshot to someone via text, then I can easily just tap here and it's going to paste the screenshot as a message so I can just send it as a message if I want. So this is something that Swift key doesn't have. So yeah, but it has that crop stuff that I showed you earlier, but not everything you are looking for will be online. Some things may be conversations with other people you are having and you just want to take a screenshot of that conversation and send it to someone else. Well, you will not be able to do it with Swift key quickly. With Swift key, you have to go into your gallery app and then send that picture to whoever you want to send it to. So that's something I like about Gboard. So for now, I will not be switching from Gboard to SwiftKey. But uh, if those things eventually come to SwiftKey, then there's a possible chance that I will switch because I like that synchronization feature. I like the fact that you don't have to leave the app that you're working on to go research something. You can easily do that while on the app. 
So yeah, this is just my brief overview of the Swift Key app. You can let me know your favorite features in the comments and uh, please subscribe to the channel. All right, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.